Hi friend, welcome back to my channel for content creators and entrepreneurs. I'm Shauna Yurko. I'm a video producer and photographer and I run a content creation business from my home. Recently, a lot of us got pushed into this work from home situation, not by choice. So today I want to talk about how to work from home effectively in 2020. I've been doing this for about a year, you guys. I've been building a business from home and I just want to pay it forward and share all the information, tips, tricks that I know to help you succeed while you're working from home. We are all in this together. If any of you guys have any tips that you would like to share with everyone who's watching this video, please definitely add those to the comments below so that we can all help each other out during this time. So let's get into today's video. We're going to be talking about how to stay organized and motivated how to work productively and efficiently from home and how to keep your mindset right when you are working from home so that you can be effective. Let's get into it. All right, so today, Let's talk about how to work from home effectively in 2020. It's my goal that by the end of this video, you leave with the tools to end your workday feeling accomplished, feeling like you have nothing left to give for the day and you can leave your work at your desk and move over to your couch and Netflix and chill. <laughs> so let's move into how to stay organized and motivated. This is your foundation for working from home effectively. It's so easy to get distracted when you're at home. This is your safe place. This is your place where you relax. This is your place where you hang out with your family or your friends. And it's been transformed into our workspace now. And it's really easy to get those lines blurred. It's either easy to go one way and just work all day and feel like you've never accomplished enough and you just have to keep going and there's never enough time to get anything done or you can go the opposite way and you can get lazy and be like, well, I'm on my couch, I might as well just watch some Netflix and oh, I'll do that project later and then eight o'clock PM hits and you're like, oh no, I, don't, I didn't do any work today. What do I do? I've been in both of those extreme places, so let's talk about how to stay organized and motivated so that you can maintain a productive work day. If you're organized and have a clear schedule when you're working from home, you will be more productive. So plan out your day, and I recommend doing this the night before. I like to take a look at like my big list of to-dos. I keep um, a running list on Wonderlist, but there's also apps out there like Asana or Slack, whatever your company uses that has your big running list of to-dos, use that. Take a look at it the night before and plan out your next day. So I like to write things down in my planner physically so that I have something to check off when I accomplish a task the next day. When you write something down, you are much more likely to get it done than if you just type it into your phone. There's a much bigger sense of responsibility that you feel and that is instilled in you. Marie Forleo and Amy Porterfield both talk about this. So use a planner, jot down your daily tasks the night before so that you are ready to just jump right in when you start work the next day. So we are organized. We have our schedule and a plan for the day. Let's talk about how to stay motivated when you're working from home. Staying motivated when you are working from home can be challenging, 100%, no doubt about it. But I have a couple of strategies that will help you to be able to stay motivated and get you started off on the right foot. My first recommendation is to establish a good morning routine, and this involves a little bit of mindset work. We're gonna talk more about mindset later on in this video, but when you start your day right, you get your mindset right for the rest of your day. And that includes your work day. And then when you're off of work at home with your family or your friends or whoever it is that you see after work. So everything starts in the morning. So establishing a good routine is so crucial. That's what I have found. For me personally, I love to work out in the morning. It can be as simple as spend 20 minutes stretching or go for a walk around the block. Get moving in the morning so that you can wake your mind up and get your mindset right so that you can stay motivated throughout your day. That's just one tip that I have that's worked for me personally. I'm sure there's a ton more out there, but it all comes back to the same idea that establishing a good morning routine will help you get into the right mindset to stay motivated throughout your day. So whatever works for you, whether it's getting moving in the morning or something else, make sure that you establish that morning routine. It will help you out. My second tip, get dressed. It sounds silly, but 
there is a certain psychology that is wrapped up in the clothes that you put on for your day. If you roll out of bed, walk to your couch, and are wearing the same t-shirt and sweatpants that you fell asleep in last night, you will be less productive that day. Does that mean you have to like get dressed up like you're going to an office? No, but I recommend changing your clothes. Sometimes I'm okay with like a throw on some yoga pants and a hoodie once in a while, but don't do this every day. It will affect your mindset and your productivity, I promise you. When you get ready for your day, it shifts something in your mind. It's almost like you respect yourself more, so you are going to put out better work. Prime your brain to get work done throughout your day by getting dressed in the morning. Super simple. Another way to make sure that you're staying motivated is to have a designated workspace that is not your couch or your bed. This is super important. Mine is over there. This is super crucial, you guys, because your brain associates different locations with different feelings and emotions and productivity levels. If you are consistently working in your bed, my bed's over there, that's why I'm pointing over there, your brain will start associating bed with work and you're gonna have a harder time sleeping, which is not going to lend to your productivity levels. Conversely, if you do a lot of work on the couch, when you finally wanna unplug for the day and hang up your laptop and quit working, it's gonna be harder to relax on that couch and watch Netflix and chill with your family because you've been working and your brain is in work mode because you're on that couch. So that's one reason why I really, really insisted on having my own designated workspace because it allows you to draw a line and set a boundary for when you're working at home because it's almost like you step into your office and then you can leave your office and be present in all of the other happenings around your house when you're done working for the day. So you've established your routine, you're getting dressed for your day, you have a designated workspace. Now in order to stay focused and make sure that you don't burn out, it's really important for you to set boundaries around how much you are working. So have a time that you're going to start to work and a time you're gonna clock out. Plain and simple. So we are organized, we're motivated, now we need to talk about how to work efficiently and productively when we're working from home. So if you are excited, please hit that like button and let's get into it. I have really exciting news for you. When it comes to being efficient, you are already ahead of the game if you're working from home because you've cut out your hour or two hours that you spend commuting to and from the office. So you've already given yourself the gift of time. Congratulations, you're already more efficient. All right, so let's give you something you can actually use now. All right, so here's some actual strategies you can use to work efficiently when you are working from home. I love to use the time blocking strategy. So this entails taking a block of time and only working on one specific project during that block of time. Put your devices, your phones, your iPads, all the things that send you notifications, they send you the news updates, they send you text messages and Facebook and Instagram and blah, 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 all the things. Put them away. You don't need them during this block of time. So I would say I'm gonna spend this 30 minute time block from 8.30 to 9 a.m. working on a shot list for a shoot that I have this next week. And during that 30 minute time period, I don't answer emails, I don't answer text messages, I put my phone face down. Sometimes I'll turn it on, do not disturb. I only work on that shot list during that 30 minute period. So whatever that looks like for you in your work, apply the time blocking method to the different projects that you have going on. For me personally, I really like to work in like 30 minute to two hour increments. Anything over two hours, I find that my productivity levels kind of start to go down after a two hour period and I find I need a break, but you'll find whatever works best for you. Okay, so we've talked about efficiency and how you can achieve that with time blocking. Let's talk about how to work productively when you're working from home. Stanford did a study that showed that productivity levels increased by 13% when employees worked remotely. So you are already getting off on the right foot. Let's talk about some strategies that you can implement to make sure that you stay productive when you're working from home. So the best way to make sure that you are staying productive throughout your day is to stay organized. And I already touched on this earlier, you know, the to-do list, checking things off, writing it down physically, 
All of those things play into this, but I think it's important to touch on again now that we are talking about productivity, because if you can stay organized, it will help you be that much more productive and maintain that you are staying on track throughout your day. Big tip, when you are making your list, don't over plan. <laughs> My biggest weakness when it comes to productivity. I give myself a list that's like a mile long that is not achievable. There's like 30 items on there. I tell myself, I'm gonna prep for this shoot. I'm gonna create six shot lists. I'm gonna go shoot six YouTube videos and I'm gonna go to the beach with my family today. Don't do this to yourself, friends. It sets you up for failure. You're less productive because you're worried about all of the things that are on your list that you're not getting to. Don't over plan. Don't put more items on your to-do list than are realistic for you to get done in one day. If any of you also struggle with this, please let me know and say me too in the comments. Help me not feel so alone in this struggle of giving myself a mile long to-do list. My next tip for being productive that I have found makes the biggest difference in the whole world for me personally is to make sure you take breaks. This kind of goes back to what I was talking about when I was discussing time blocking. So I've identified my, my slump time. Like after about two hours of working on the same project, I notice a decline in my productivity. You gotta find out what this time frame is for you and make sure that you give yourself a break. It can be a five minute break, it can be a 10 minute break, you can take a 30 minute break, whatever. Go eat your lunch but it's really important to take breaks throughout the day. There's a lot of studies that show that breaks throughout a work day increase creativity levels and productivity levels. So give yourself breaks, make sure you schedule them throughout your day so that we can be more productive. So before we move on to the mindset portion of this video, let's talk about if you are working from home with children. <laughs> I can speak from experience, I'm there right now. We can do this, guys. Depending on the age of your kids, you have to handle this in different ways. The first thing that you have to do is identify and set your boundaries and expectations early. So let your kids know what your working hours are going to be. Like designate those hours and stick to it, but make sure that you are setting time aside during your day to connect with them. Especially now that you're all under the same roof and we're all staying at home together, you're bound to run into each other or they're gonna be coming in and knocking on your door and being like, mom, dad, what are you doing? Let's hang out. So if you set those boundaries early on and your expectations early on, it will set you up for a more successful work day. And they will notice that time that you take to make sure that you connect with them throughout the day. So time blocking is actually super effective when it comes to working with kids because you can say, hey, I'm working for the next two hours, I'll see you in two hours and we'll hang out. Boom, you time block for two hours, you work on your project, you're done, you connect with your kids and then you go back to work and you do your next project and so on and so forth and then you're done with your day and you're super productive and your kids feel seen and heard and you maintain that great family bond. So what if you have kids that can't fend for themselves for a couple hours at a time? For example, my child is one. Can't leave him in a room. It's just not responsible. Something that has worked well for my husband and I is we work in shifts. For example, my workday starts when Bo's workday ends and this works really well for us. Okay, so we have covered how to work productively when you're working from home. You're staying organized. You're not over committing or over planning. You're setting realistic goals and you are taking breaks or working in shifts if you have kids. Let's jump in now and talk about mindset. How to get your mindset right so that you don't go crazy working from home. Ah. Mindset. Figured it would be appropriate to talk about on our new teal couch. Sorry, just super pumped about the status of this couch. This couch came in literally the day before they put everything on lockdown for coronavirus. So we are super grateful to have a couch in our apartment at this time. So let's talk about mindset and keeping your mindset right. Mindset is so important when it comes to working from home. You gotta be confident to put out your best work. And sometimes it's hard to be confident when you're working from home because your only human interaction is with yourself. Again, I wanna recommend to you get dressed for your day. You feel better about yourself, you feel more confident, you feel more ready to take on your day. If you have to hop on a Zoom call with someone, you're ready and you don't have to be like, oh, what am I gonna wear? How am I gonna do my hair? I better like put some makeup on. No, I like to just make sure that I'm ready for my day when it very first starts. You're ready to take on anything that comes your way. So that just gives you a prepared and confident mindset 
when you start your day. So get dressed, get ready first thing in the morning. In addition to setting yourself up to be confident for your day, I also wanna to talk to you a little bit about mental health because it is very easy to feel isolated when you're working from home. So I recommend scheduling virtual interactions with your coworkers or with family members. There are great resources out there. You can use Zoom for free. You can FaceTime for free, but set virtual lunch dates or virtual coffee dates so that you can maintain that level of human interaction and you don't feel so isolated and alone. You are not alone in this. We are all in this together. I wanna to touch a little bit on something I mentioned earlier. This really plays into your mental health. Have your designated start and stop time for your workday. This can do really tricky things to your brain if you are constantly in work mode. I've kind of noticed a pattern with myself over the past year. I'm not sure if this is you. Please let me know in the comments below too. But I've noticed a pattern with myself where if I'm just working, 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 like the second I wake up, I'm working, 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 and then I feel stressed when I'm going to take a break, which should not be the case. Or I feel stressed and I feel like I have to continue working and I'm not productive enough even though I've worked 12 hours in a day. And it's really easy to fall into that mindset when you're working from home because you don't have that boundary that is set where you're going to an office and you basically get to leave your work at the office. So it's really important to set up these boundaries for yourself so you can set yourself up for a successful working environment at your home. Wrapping up mindset. Maintain a confident approach to your workday. Get ready in the morning and check in with yourself about your mental health. Combat that isolation, schedule virtual lunch dates or coffee dates, and make sure that you have a start and stop time that is a reasonable expectation so that you can feel like you've had a productive day and you can put it away. In this video, we covered how to stay organized and motivated. We talked about how to work efficiently and productively. And we also talked about how to keep your mindset right when you are working remotely. That's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. If this information was helpful to you or if someone that you know would benefit from any of these tips, please share it with them. Remember, we are all in this together. And if you like this kind of content, subscribe to my channel, hit that bell for notifications to know when I post a new video and I will see you in the next one. Take care, friends.